Okay, um, warning, big warning. This was supposed to be me writing a really quick crappy story based on this dumb tweet, but because I did it live, naturally, I got sidetracked before I even started making the thing. Most of this video is me rambling about my questionable opinions on writing, and the rest is Sabuchi and AGGP bonding. With the word for the hen's husband used a lot. And by that I mean if you are not into any of these things, please evacuate immediately. Otherwise, try to enjoy. If you are not up to date on your daily dose of Warframe partner drama, good, best not to be. Shortly put, there's some bad blood between some people and perhaps that is all we really need to know. Instead of dwelling on and exploring this bitterness, negativity and past grudges, let us mend the wounds of this shattered community with love and compassion. Administered through beautiful prose I am going to write right now, because there is no time like the present. Past is a little close, I guess, but it's still um, four letters off. However, to be perfectly safe and not provoke any further outrage, in this story we shall call AGGP Robert and Sabuchi will be called Sabuchi. I think that should work. But in order for this not to be just pathetic artsy romance, I will include some subjective, meaning bad, writing advice so that you too can create your own community healing works of art. Or life scaring works of art. Either way, really. Tip zero. Use a better word processor than this, but yeah. Ah. Tip one. Have a strong opening line. It has to reflect the spirit of your story and make the reader interested in continuing reading. It has to be intriguing and powerful, or at least unique. I guess I could google a few good examples. Um, hold on. Uh, good, first search result, let's go. The Martian. I am pretty much fucked. Says a lot. <laughs> also making you question what happened, while being short but still having character. Great book too. Good writing doesn't need to be a baroque diary or fancy words, it just needs to be interesting. Fahrenheit 451. It was a pleasure to burn. Similar thing. Anna Karenina. All happy families are alike. Each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Just to point out, it doesn't necessarily have to be short and brash. Just interesting. The Crow Road. It was the day my grandmother exploded. <laughs> if that doesn't make you want to read a book, I don't know what will. Look, even Just Getting Rolling had a decent one. Harry Potter, Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number 4, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. Think what you will of the author, but the thank you very much is great. Slaughterhouse 5. All this happened, more or less. Lolita. Lolita, light of my life, fire of my loins, my sin, my soul. The tip of the tongue, taking a trip of three steps down the palate to tap at three on the teeth. Lolita. Throwing a longer, more elaborate one in the mix. <laughs> also, if you are a degenerate weep, I'd like to say that this book is not about fucking children, you pedophile. But unfortunately, I can't say that because that's exactly what the book is about. But yeah, some good examples. Now, this is a super educational and informative video, so I guess it's good to have a few bad examples too. Now, I could write some, but we'll get to that eventually. Okay, here we have some. Cheryl's mind turned like the veins of a wind powered turbine, chopping her sparrow like thorns into bloody pieces that fell onto a growing pile of forgotten memories. <laughs> this is a trying too hard transcription of Cheryl stumbled over her own thoughts, which doesn't make a great opening line, but neither does the original. As the dark and mysterious stranger approached, Angela bit her lip anxiously, hoping with every nerve, cell and fiber of her being that this would be the one man who would understand, who would take her away from all this, and who would not just... 
Fuck, this is the second time I'm reading and I still can't. Who would take her away from all this? And who would not just squeeze her boob and make a loud honking noise as all the others had? See, I can say some opening lines are great, but I can't say these are terrible. If this was meant to be a funny writing, and it sounds like it was, this wouldn't be bad at all. I love the contrast of the basic bland romance beginning and then SLAM! Boops and honking noises. I kind of want to find out more, and that's what an opening line should do. Yeah, unfortunately the internet seems to only quote the author and not the book it's from, so I can't really read it, but while searching, I did find the big coloring book of vaginas, and <laughs> does God ever speak through cats? So I have my reading needs catered for the next week. She strutted into my office, wearing a dress that clung to her like sarin wrap to a sloppily butchered pork knuckle, bone and sinew jutting and lurching asymmetrically beneath its folds, the tightness exaggerating the granularity of the suit and causing what little palatable meat was there to sweat, its transparency the thief of imagination. Um, <laughs> this does expand my vocabulary, but yeah, this one is not so great. I think using a strange, unpleasant metaphor is fair game, but stretching it out like this is counterproductive. These are meant to shock, not to put people to sleep. Okay, while searching for the books, I actually read the introduction to this article, and these are not from actual books. It's just a hypothetical, on-purpose, bad openers people submit to a contest. Well, <laughs> that explains a lot. Here's me defending non-existent books, but uh, never mind then. I am used to making a fool of myself, but this doesn't help us with bad opening lines then. Um, so I just checked the article's quote-unquote author, who bundled and republished other people's funny content with an intro, because that's how modern journalism works, <laughs> and also this video so far. And he actually is an author himself! So let's check his book instead of these fictional openings in search of a good example of a bad opening. Yeah, it makes sense. The young people who traverse dimensions while wearing sunglasses. <laughs> Good! This is either going to be great or awful, which I like. The scale goes like this. Best is best, worst is second best, then good, then bad, and then bland is the worst, simply because bland is the least interesting. By the title alone, this is not going to be bland. Uh, while I'm doing writing tips, tip 2, this is called a preface, not a prologue. Also, don't confuse it with a foreword that's written by someone else. People have been writing for some time, so there is a lot of useless terminology that you should probably google before selling a book. This is actually for sale. Audiobook is zero pound, I don't know why, but you can buy it as well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> blah blah blah, first part, whatever, but listen here. But more than anything, this is a story that begins with my father, you've never met him and you never will, that's probably for the best, I used to play this game with my friends in which we competed to see who had crappy parents. I stopped playing this game when I beat an orphan. Her parents died in a fire. The problem was that mine are still alive. <laughs> what? Tip 3. Don't... This is a 90% a true story, and I really hope that the so-called prologue is the 10%. But I'm getting massively sidetracked here. Why are we even talking about this? Let's just read the opening and get back to writing our own. When you graduate college, it's customary to receive a car or a Mac computer. Okay. A half eaten apple representing the bite you are about to take out of life. You didn't scarf down the whole thing yet, because it's best to save some for later, when you aren't 22 and know what to do with it. Being young is like having a large penis. Just because you have it doesn't mean you know the first thing about how it works. Okay, I think that gives you an idea about butt openings, hopefully. Let's take inspiration. The thing with an opening is you have to be conscious of what you are writing and make the line follow suit. And since I want to do a stupid fanfic of Sabuchi's and Robert's beautiful relationship, I'll start with... 
his throbbing cock halted the zipper. It gives you a nice, powerful image that informs you of what you are getting into while also introducing some mystery. What zipper? Why did it halt the zipper? Normally the penis is inside the pants and you unzip them, so normally it doesn't obstruct the zipping process. Did the peasant get his foreskin stuck in a zipper while preparing to do oh, the sex? Maybe. Read on. In a while. Tip 4. Sounds and interjections are cool. Try using them sometimes. Most sound a little silly, but there is usually a place where you can squeeze them in seamlessly enough and they give you a nice dynamic. Um, zip! His throbbing cog halted the zipper. Now this is not ideal. Doesn't connect too well. Seems like a penis halting a zipper sounds like zip. Zip? And his throbbing cock halted the zipper. Zip. But then his throbbing cock halted the zipper. It's not too bad, but ordinary conjunctions are not up to my standard for a beautiful story of this caliber's opening line. Zip. With a screech. His throbbing cock halted the zipper. Now I think it's better, but it sounds like maybe the screech is emanated by the penis, which is not great, but fuck it. Tip 5. If you get stuck, just call it art and keep writing. Art. The thing about writing is that it's art. It's subjective. People may not like what you make, but it is your own personal creative expression and it should be respected at least as such, even if it isn't appreciated. So if you think something's bad, but you can't fix it right now, call it art and write on. Move on. Either it will stay art or you'll fix it later. No sense to fixate on a single thing, especially at the start. Sabuchi looked at his... Now I want to say Sabuchi looked at his penis, but tip 6. Synonyms are weird. People at school probably told you, you don't repeat words. Use a synonym and while that's a little true, there are exceptions. You have to strike a balance between cock, 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 cock and a different word for it in each sentence, like... Oh, let me actually get a thesaurus. Cock, penis, dick, pecker, brick, shaft, Johnson, manhood, willy, member, phallus, <laughs> etc. If you do that, people will understand you are trying too hard. Repeat words sometimes, especially the word say. Here I got cock a sentence before, and it would be completely fine to put down a penis right here, but I don't want to do that because I'm crazy. Art! Here's a secret. You don't have to use synonyms. There are secret writer things like metaphors or idioms that make you look like you know what you are doing when used appropriately. I could write, Sabuchi looked at his genetic legacy propagator. Maybe that's a little more of a metonymy than a metaphor. Maybe Snigrug, because a penis is more of an injector. Either way, this is obviously bad. We exchanged a synonym for a string of quasi-intellectual sounding words that is too long and conveys too little meaning. If you didn't know Sabuchi, you couldn't even tell if this is a man or a woman. Legacy is obsolete, genetic propagator would mean the same thing, one less word. But we already have a word for this, it's called genitalia. Genetic legacy propagator may have a place in some story about a dehumanized society, where everything's named artificially like this, but otherwise not so much. If your figures of speech look like this... Ooh, fuck. If your figures of speech look like this, just put in a cock. Four letters says a lot. Rough and a little vulgar gives more feel than a scientific term such as penis. It's not a penis, it's a big fucking cock if it halted a zipper with a screech. But for the sake of argument, let's use a metaphor or metonymy or fucking whatever. Sapucci looked at his... 
20 inches of meat. Engorged meat. <laughs> Tip 7. Don't write like I do. I like wordy but raw descriptions. It's no smooth, warm, shiny rod of love. It's 20 inches of engorged meat. Both describe the same thing, more or less, but put a different picture in your mind. Also, don't mind it's five words. I didn't mean that genetic legacy propagator is bad because it's too many words, but because it's too many words without a meaning. Here, 20 inches gives you a precise measurement of how big a man I think Sabuchi is, engorged describes the visual quality, and meat refers to cock. 20 inches of engorged meat. Doesn't roll off the tongues too well, but if you read it, it's fine. A lot of different nice letters. So yeah, great. After all this time, here we are, we have two sentences. Now we have two sentences. I should probably shut up and just write more and keep the Neo Shakespeare comments to a minimum. Sabuchi looked at his 20 inches of engorged meat in dismay. There was no way he could fit it into his stealth suit with Robert's ample as bounce. Probably not bouncing. That's not a good visual, and it probably wouldn't do that in a stealth suit. Also, they have stealth suits. <laughs> what a twist! Also, he couldn't fit it in, implying he undressed, and now was trying to put on the stealth suit, which solves the mystery from like two sentences ago, as to why was the zipper halted. Woo! There was no way he could fit it into his stealth suit with Robert's ample ass taunting him. Just a few meters away. Tip 8. Know your audience. Due to Google's soul-stealing analytics, I know a slight majority of people watching will probably come from North America. So, instead of meters, I'll use... Um, miles is 4 kilometers. Inches is 4 centimeters. What's the colonist unit? 4 meters. Yeah. There was no way he could fit it all into his stealth suit with Robert's ample ass taunting him just a few distance Fahrenheit away. <coughs> Tip 9. Again, know what you are writing. This is a light-hearted fanfic of two epic Warframe gamers who fell in love. I know meters are probably feet, but distance Fahrenheit are more reflective of what this story is, i.e. dumb. No, Sabuchi wasn't the slightest bit gay. Thank you very much. Tip 10. A good writer steals things. A bad writer also steals things. The difference is good writers know what to steal and steal tiny but great parts of other people's works, while bad writers steal entire chunks seemingly at random, demonstrated here. It's not only that we unintentionally are influenced by all the media we consume, no matter whether we want to or not, but statistically, just purely statistically, odds are you are not the best writer in the world, just too many fucking people. And if there's someone better, why not look at what they are doing and try to do if it works well? Give it your own spin. Take inspiration from other things, in moderation. A lot has been said and written and there's a good chance that even if you write something you think is original, somebody already did a similar thing. So unless you copy entire characters or settings or monologues, don't stress over it. No, Sabuchi wasn't gay and the slightest. Thank you very much. Tip 11. Read what you write and shuffle it around if needed. The original sentence felt clunky. He was a good person and didn't really care. Who oiled his rod? 
As long as they were as unbelievably sexy as his beloved husband. Which is actually true. Uh, the first part, I mean. Still, the sentence has way too many asses, but if I keep going this slow, we'll be here for a very long time, so let's just continue. The tight military outfit emphasized all of his two muscular muscles. <laughs> Tip 12. Don't write muscular muscles. The tight military outfit emphasized his two robust hind muscles ripe for the taking. Mm -hmm. But there was no time for that now. They came here with a purpose. A mission. A mission to secure a brighter future for all of mankind so that their four children Bobby Barbie Batman uh, Benny and Sabucci Francesco Jr. could live peaceful harmonious lives this is called padding tip 13 don't do it it's unnecessary and I am doing it because of the original tweet and because I feel bad about writing just one paragraph and calling it a story. But I will never again mention the children and they provide very little to the quote-unquote plot here. Also, live life is a common collocation. It works fine even though the words are nearly identical. English supposedly works like that. No need to do something crazy like... Um, so they could metabolize through their peaceful, harmonious lives. No matter the cost. Yes. With a sigh of frustration, mm -hmm. oh, wow. Sabuchi finally gave up on trying to zip up the suit's pants. His pride sticking out menacingly. It will be a form of asserting dominance, he argued. If not that, a distraction, at the very least. Robert nodded silently in respect and the duo headed out, headed out, into the fearsome, fearsome Canadian, Canadian, <laughs> Canadian night. Let's get real fucking pretentious now. The dark building stretched far beyond the chemical clouds. A monstrous monolith built on broken dreams and empty promises. Mm. Its mere presence made the skin crawl and testicles shrink. As they got closer and closer, the air thickened, thick, thick, thickened. Both men engulfed by doubts and cold sweat. It was as if the growing of a silhouette, hope it's written like that, of the corrupt skyscraper could stare into their weary souls, souls. Lesser men would have wavered, but Sabuchi's will 
and the bone was where un unyielding. Oh, motivated by justice and love, he pressed onwards, urging his lover to do the same, urging his partner, urging his Warframe partner, his Warframe and life partner to do the same. I would give you a tip 14, but I'm kind of in a good pace right now. Finally reaching the building's outer wall, Robert put a tiny metallic object, object in his rear and laid down on the ground, face first in the ash. The ash of the dead. Okay, tip 15. Sometimes you will write something and you won't know what exactly you mean by that. Sounds nice to you or sets the atmosphere better. And it's cool as long as it looks like it belongs there even if you don't know what it is. I don't know what I mean by the ash of the dead. Why or how it got there. But leave things like that up for interpretation and pretend it makes sense. Uh, his heartbeat hastened. His ass tightened. He grunted and groaned. He exerted all his strength. Yeah. Every muscle strained to its limit. His concentration was that of a mountain. Massive, but still, it was not enough. I... I'm not sure I can do it. I am sorry, sweetie, said Robert. Tip 16, use direct speech. More than I do here if your story permits it. Direct speech is good. Tip 17, make your direct speech believable. This may not sound like it, or again, it may sound like ridicule, but apparently the completely fictional character Robert, all similarities to real people are purely coincidental, by the way, uses that word an awful lot when addressing people. This is a lore-friendly story with a lot of research behind it, regrettably. Said Robert, a single tear dropping from his eye into the Ash of the Dead. Ash of the Dead, trademarked by better name pending, available on eBay for 500 USD. Don't ask how I got it. Um, said Robert, a single tear dropping from his... from his... Drowning eyes. I think that's good. A single tear dropping from his drowning eyes. Hush! Whispered Sabuji. Let me help you. He kneeled beside his husband and started sensually massaging his tender, quivering body. Together, we can, we will do it. We must, for anything is possible with love. I would like to reiterate, this is a wholesome, positive story, and let none tell you otherwise. As his hands moved towards the more... Not sensitive, already got sensual. Oh, fuck it. As his hands moved towards the more sensitive body areas, 
Robert's ass muscles titan. I already have that as well. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's slap more there. Yeah. He felt the overwhelming pressure. The pressure of pleasure. His butt clenching more and more with every passing second. With every stroke of Sabuchi's mighty hands. His ass rock hard. But still, the tension kept growing until finally, yes, with Herculean strength, Robert's butt cheeks unclenched. Boom! A thunderous clap roared through the city as a grappling hook shot out of his ass. It surged upwards, piercing the diseased sky and lodging itself firmly at the very top of the building. Sabuchi lovingly patted Robert on the back, on the back, tested the stability of the climbing rope, and both prepared for the long way up. And the climb was uneventful. And I want to skip it, but it's not good if your story has huge jumps in it, so let's give it a few sentences for consistency's sake. Their progress was slow but steady, high above the city rooftops. Sabuchi's antenna, doubtlessly pointing to the stars, guiding them ever higher, like the icy wind that crashed against them. Sabuchi's thoughts battered against his own mind. For twenty years he held a grudge against digital extremists. Any and all similarities to real-world companies are purely coincidental. For 20 years he held a grudge against analog extremists. The company that took away his, his ability to enjoy Video game products. I'm not happy with this, but let's just keep it going. It was not always so. In times past, battle chassis. Any and all similarities to real world video game products are purely coincidental. Sabuchi is still in, though, because I trust he has enough reason to be able to see this for what it is. Meaning a joke. In times past, Battle Chassis was a jewel of gaming that radiated hope and the warmth. Players frolicked on blooming fields of flowers filled with sunshine. Together with its developers. But then, then something changed. Perhaps they unearthed 
an ancient horror slumbering below the studio. Maybe their hearts grew dark in the shadow of corporate greed. Or maybe they just burned out. Either way, none stayed the same in the aftermath. Gamer wallets emptied in fell swoops of the microtransactions scythe. The gameplay more of a chore than joy. Once familiar developer faces grew distant and sullen. Families were broken. Life became a grotesque, grotesque mockery of its former self. No more. Today, two gamers would rise up on the dark glass panes of analog extremists' cis citadel of business and put an end to it all. This is now without tips because I'm just writing bullshit. Well, more so at this point, so don't take any hints from this section. Acidic air filled their lungs as they reached the top of the wicked spire. Here laid the lair of the beast. <laughs> the opulent penthouse of Stephen Smirkfair, CEO of Analog Extremists and President of the New Quebec Dominion, Robert and Sabucci silently crept alongside the outdoors pool. Their path lined with ostentatious... <laughs> yeah, now I'm just flexing my vocabulary. Their path lined with ostentatious statues and extravagant art pieces. Sabucci's stomach stomach turned at the side of this. How could have analog extremists fallen this far? He was plagued by questions only one person could answer. As they approached the heavy golden door, they looked at each other, faces pale and uncertain. Their rage and anger waned now that they were so close to their goal. Robert closed his eyes and cocked the pistol. Not that kind of cocked, goddammit, it's a gun terminology. The door flew open, despite being heavy, and Robert and... Robert and Sabucci rushed inside. They froze Moments after Stephen Smirkfair. Was it, was it Smirkfair? 
Stephen Smirkfair was standing right then and there. In his white endangered tiger fur bathrobe. He's a bad person, guys. He also hates women and minorities. Holding a glass of wine. And having a goatee. <laughs> Finally! You took your sweet time getting here, said Stephen Smirkfair mockingly. Robert was baffled. How did you know we would come? Mm -hmm. And not that kind of come, it's a fairly common verb, look it up. Robert was baffled. How did you know we would come? We were wearing stealth suits, he exclaimed. Ah, oh, fuck. They didn't cover the entirety of your body. Steven glanced at Sabuchi. Damn erectile hyperfunction. <laughs> Cursed Sabuchi. Looking down at his still standing. Cock! <laughs> Stephen Smirkfair smirked. When my security notified me of your intent, I thought I would do you the honor of welcoming you personally before your untimely demise. Robert's face hardened. Face hardened. His arm flew up as he pointed the pistol at Stephen. No! Robert shouted. I do not care if your lackeys kill us or not. Hmm. Anything is better than living in a world where analog extremists are like this. <laughs> in a world where the battle chassis did Enya has this much vacuum wrench. <clears throat> For context, that's not a joke. Well, it, it is, but it's making fun of a real thing. The coincidental Robert similarity person had a meltdown because Titania, Titania, had too much of vacuum range in Razor Wing and that didn't conform to his personal playstyle. So DE, proactive as always, not really, had to make an augment to fix that immediately. I really wish that was a joke, but no. In a world where the battle chassis did Enya has this much vacuum wrench, she sucks too much, too much. Robert looked at Stephen with teary eyes and shaking hands, looking for some kind of reprieve. An explanation, an apology, anything, but Stephen began laughing. It was a cruel, condescending laugh of a man who could know for the troubles of the ordinary man. It echoed through 
his empty heart and sparsely furnished room growing louder and more hysteric BANG then silence for a few seconds all stood motionless Stephen Robert Sabuchi Time Sabuch Sabuchi's mouth was wide open as he looked at the smoking barrel of Robert's gun. Before he could process what happened, what just happened, suddenly the infernal laughing began anew. Bang, bang, bang. The laughing did not cease this time. Robert emptied all his shots into Stephen's body. Yet Stephen laughed still. The gun dropped to the floor. Primal fear took hold of Robert. <laughs> How? He stuttered. The bullets left few marks on Stephen's body. No blood poured out of his wounds. <laughs> Did you really think? Did you really think you could kill me with a simple me with a simple toy like that? Said Stephen, still laughing as he grabbed the top of his own head and pulled. Something in his head cracked, it snapped as his skin started tearing away. Robert and Sabuji stared in horror as his face ruptured open to reveal dark green scales, the pair of predatory bitch black eyes, and countless white fangs sharp as knives. <clears throat> sharp as a YouTuber's wit. A lizard peasant infiltrator! Now it all makes sense! <laughs> Just take my word for it. Sabuchi cried. Yes, I am afraid your ears. Earth's weapons are not quite enough to pierce my skin. As you see, seeing as your we see. Has been. 
I has important matters to attend. Claws. Fuck. Claw. What the fuck? Claws. Long swords <laughs> erupted from the lizard's hands as he moved to end Robert's life. Robert couldn't run. He could not even speak. He was frozen in a place by the reptile's alien gaze. <laughs> Sabuchi looked frantically around the room for something to get out of this mess. A chair, an ugly porcelain ways. A collection of Aztec spears. No, useless. His eyes wandered back to his enlarged penis. Wait! shouted, shouted Sabuchi. The penis mightier than the sword. <laughs> Grammar aside, it's true. The lizard chuckled. What? Shooting you could have never worked because you cannot fight hate with hate. Only with love. The corrupt gaming empire, your hatred and evil built can be unmade only with our honest love. <laughs> Fuck, if that isn't a wholesome resolution, I don't know what is. Robert, let's Fuck him up to show him the true power of love. Something glinted in Robert's eyes, and something else ripped through his pants. The night was then filled with inhuman reptilian shrieks that reverberated throughout the city. The next day, after such a long time, sun, sun shone once again through the clouds. The evil skyscrapers Black glass walls were washed clean with waves of strange, viscous white fluid. The lizard peasant's heart melted and he would become an ambassador, preaching of benevolence and love to his kind. Peace with the aliens was made, and in time the land would heal, and gaming would be made whole again. Fuck, wrong, wrong one. There we go. <laughs> Fuck me. On a second thought, don't. Wow. Well, if this doesn't heal the Warframe community, frankly, I don't know what will. But we can never relent 
Remember to spread positivity and love wherever you go, even if the times are difficult. On a more serious note, if you want to gleam some writing insights, tip 18. Don't take my word for it. There's a lot of way more qualified sources to help you with that. There's a lot of different genres and styles, and very few of them work like what I just wrote. I am saying this because, aside from really short YouTube videos that feature extremely crude humor, I don't really write in English, it's not my native language, and my grasp on it isn't as good. So feel free to consider the general advice, but don't really get inspired by my sentence structure and pacing and way of expressing ideas, because I guess English may do it a little differently. I honestly never bothered to check. Also, <laughs> punctuation. No fucking clue how that works. I, I am sorry for any crimes committed against the grammatical rules. What I can say, though, is tip 19. If you are interested in improving at writing, you must write, of course, but also must make what you write public. Handling feedback properly is something way too complex to go over in the end of this monster of a video, but it's important that you have feedback. Failure is not an option can go fuck itself. Don't be afraid of failure. It is not a thoroughly bad thing, it's a necessary prerequisite for improvement. If you avoid making mistakes by inactivity, by not doing things and not publishing what you write, you will never be able to learn from it and actually do something right. Look at this madman. What the fuck is Love Rift? It's positively awful. I make fun of it. It's a Warframe fanfiction so bad it's actually good. But it, even if it wasn't, either through healthy self-confidence or lack of awareness, this guy wrote it and put it out for others to read. Now, his story at least amuses a few people online, because I made some crappy videos based on it. Maybe he'll get some pointers from the feedback, I don't know. But he wouldn't have the opportunity to even do that if he didn't publish it. This guy... Uh, what the fuck is his book? I can't get over this, and I think I will need to read it because of morbid curiosity. It's just unsettling, but he put it out. Maybe he'll get, like three euro coins from me buying it. You forfeit that possibility if you don't publish your stuff. So, publish your stuff. Right. Also, tip 20. Use round numbers for lists. Makes them sound official and trustworthy. 